I recently got called from a new member of our non-for-profit organization, VIEW, Veterinary Initiative for Endangered Wildlife. He called in sick for another day of suffering from COVID. He was lethargic, coughing and sneezing. And he asked me, is it possible that I gave COVID to my cats? And I said, welcome to VIEW. Yes, it's possible to share disease with your cat in fact, people can give disease to tigers and other wildlife. But our work is to look at it the other way, how domestic animals and people can give disease to our wildlife. Yes, COVID came from wildlife. 75% of new and emerging diseases has come from wildlife. Ebola, SARS, H1N1, we even share tuberculosis and rabies with our wildlife. But little work has been done in investigating how disease can impact our wildlife from our domestic animals and people. That's the missing piece to conservation. So when we suffer, our animals suffer and our planet suffers. My wake-up call was here in Montana how disease can impact local population. I got a call while working at Fish, Wildlife and Parks as a wildlife veterinarian about a bighorn sheep die-off just north of Yellowstone. We got out into the pastures and we saw this beautiful ram, emaciated and staggering, and we watched him take his last breath. And when we looked up into the pastures, we saw dotted along the landscape dozens of dead and dying bighorn sheep. And we sampled those wild sheep that day, and we found that they died due to pneumonia, a pathogen that we also found in a domestic sheep herd that was commingling with this wild herd, causing no sickness in the domestic sheep, but wiped out 90% of that local population. Little work is being done in investigating other wildlife, understanding how wildlife die, investigating by looking at the diseases that they can get and how it can wipe out a population. This is not just happening in Montana. It's happening across the globe. One million species are at risk of extinction. Half of our vertebral species have been lost in the past 50 years. An example of a species near collapse happened across the globe. This photograph is what I saw in Montana, but this is a saiga antelope, a critically endangered species. Conservation efforts worked for years and put millions of dollars into trying to save this species from anti-poaching, habitat encroachment, climate change. But within two weeks, the whole, nearly the whole species collapsed. 70% of the global population died due to disease, 210,000 animals. And I have to wonder, had a disease surveillance program been included in those conservation efforts, might we have been able to stop this die-off? That is why I co-founded VIEW, to include wildlife health efforts into our conservation work. And we do it in a sustainable way. We work with the people that are actually working in conservation government, university, local conservation stakeholders. We do it in three main principles, through education, in disease surveillance, safe capture techniques, through 
providing infrastructure where needed, a laboratory, a database, and helping our partners initiate research into disease so they can include it into their conservation package. An example of including wildlife health into conservation, recently there was a local decline in a moose population in the southern region of the greater Yellowstone region. Moose can die due to hit by car. Predation, climate change, and also disease. We're seeing this as a sick moose up in the northern areas of North America due to winter tick. So we joined a conservation group, state, federal agencies, university. Here's a photograph, Montana State University student is investigating if parasites and climate change have a component to this decline. State agency is putting on a collar to look for the movement of the moose. And the yellow shirt is a view veterinarian helping with the anesthesia, including wildlife health, into the conservation package. VIEW works in North America. We have projects in Africa and also in Asia. About 10 years ago, I started a project in Nepal, a country rich in biodiversity, endangered species like tigers, rhinos, and elephants. And most importantly, people that were very committed to conservation. The country is committed to conservation. And we implemented our three main principles, working with the government in the parks, university students, and a local NGO. I was working at our laboratory, which we helped build, at their biodiversity center in their national park, teaching a workshop on disease surveillance. And we got a call about a tiger-human conflict. The thought was that habitat encroachment was the problem that we needed to go out and move this tiger to another park with less tigers, less people. So we set out with our dart gun, mounted the elephants, and set out into the jungle. And we found him on the edge of the park in tall grass, and health was his main problem. He couldn't get up. He had a neurological condition causing hind limb paresis, or weakness in his hind limb could be due to injury, could be due to a virus, a dog disease. We were able to move him to a safe location and rehabilitate him and treat him and let him go back and live a healthy life. But we also collected blood and included him into a study which we collected blood from about a dozen other tigers. This valuable piece of information allows us a window into understanding the diseases that tigers may be exposed to. And we found in our study that the tigers were exposed to common viruses from cattle, from dogs, from cats, from even people. Once we understand the diseases that they're faced, only then are we able to prevent disease. So although we were able to treat that tiger and re-release him to the wild, we really work on a population level. How can we save endangered species on a population level? Can we vaccinate the dogs in the buffer zone that live around the parks that may be spilling disease into the wildlife population to reduce disease that tigers are very sensitive to? What's really exciting is in the past 10 years, our Nepali partners have doubled the number of tigers. And I'm happy that we were able to contribute to them reaching their goal. But the biggest conservation contribution I believe that VIEW is doing is that we developed a digital disease surveillance system that wasn't there before. So like when you walk into the hospital and they input your information into a computer and the nurse takes your vitals and the technician 
uploads your blood work and x-rays. We designed this for critical species. We designed it with veterinarians and biologists and researchers. And I'll walk you through this. Wildlife health information system. That's a moose immobilized. We took some blood, but we can upload GPS coordinates, photographs, take their blood, analyze their blood, and put this all in one location. So the people that have the authority to use this system, researchers, veterinarians, biologists, all have one place so it's easy for them to understand the disease trends so that they can press a button and report to the managers who help manage policy for our endangered wildlife. In light of COVID, this is a critical tool. VIEW has designed a program to solve targeted solutions for difficult conservation problems. I'm a wildlife veterinarian. I can't solve climate change. I can't solve poaching or habitat encroachment. But what I can do is investigate for disease and possibly help prevent that next outbreak. It is time to put money, resources, and funding towards wildlife health to include it into the conservation toolkit. When you're walking in Montana with your dog or you're snuggling your cat at home, understand that our health is intricately linked. Because when we're healthy, our animals are healthy, and our planet is healthy. It's one planet and one health. Thank you very much.